Hey you guys, it's Courtney. I'm here with a teen Sabbath school. Okay, so I am actually speaking today. Uh, you will be watching this on Sabbath, October 10th. And I am talking about 2 Timothy. And so as I'm preparing for this sermon and running through it and studying more and more, um, I wanted to share a couple of things with you that I'm finding in it because I feel like first and second Timothy are such huge encouragement, um, to youth and to, to teenagers and to really to anyone, but particularly young people. I want to bring out first, first Timothy chapter four. I love for you to flip over to chapter four of first Timothy and we see verse 12, it starts, let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. So these are things that come from the Holy Spirit. When you allow God into your heart and you seek him, he gives you with the Holy Spirit. And that's where these things come from. Your conduct, love, your spirit, your faith, your purity. These are pieces of the fruit of the spirit, right? And so I love how it's saying, don't care what other people think if you're young. Stay true to God. Be an example. You have the opportunity to be an example to adults. I'm sure you're very aware of current events in the world right now, whether you're hearing things from parents or teachers or pastors, whoever. You're not blind to what's going on in the world. And unfortunately, particularly on social media, people forget that they are to be representatives of Christ on this earth. So as young people, you have the opportunity to say, no, I'm not going to engage in negative conversation and talk. I'm going to stay true to Christ, being an example, being an example in your conduct, the way you love your spirit, your faith, your purity. Verse 13 says, till I come, give attention to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. This isn't saying um, our rules, a Seventh-day Adventist, we don't do certain things or do certain things. It's not talking about church doctrine. It's talking about Christ's doctrine, the doctrine of Paul, the apostle. And what is this doctrine? The gospel. Paul is telling us here, focus on the gospel study it, read it, absorb it, meditate on it. And this is how you can achieve those other things. That's how you can um, experience the spirit through God's word and seeking the truth out of that. That's how you get those. Verse 14 says, do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on in hands of the eldership. So this is talking specifically to Timothy. But I do feel that this applies to us as well. We have a gift. And God, you know, he did think of you ever since the beginning. He knew you. God doesn't control our future. He doesn't force us. It's, it's not his choice. It's ours. But he knows it. He knows everything from beginning to end. And he's chosen to give us free will. He knows who is choosing him and who is not, but he allows us to make that choice. Verse 15, meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely to them that your progress may be evident to all. If you are giving yourself to God and you're giving yourself to studying scripture and living for him, and that's your main purpose in life, which it should be, other people are going to see that. And your progress and your faithfulness and your life, the good things that happen as a result of that will be recognized by others. Take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, you will save both yourself and those who hear you. You have the opportunity not only to save yourself and by save yourself we cannot save ourselves. It's not possible. It's only Jesus. But what he is saying here is save yourself like accepting Christ and not denying him and save yourself in your own life. Save yourself from misery and depression. Save yourself from 
being away from God. And then those that hear you and see this faithfulness and this love also have this opportunity to be saved, not just eternally, but saved from this day-to-day burden, right? Life is full of suffering, and that's not the way it's meant to be. So when you show people what closer to what's closer to what it was supposed to be, then they seek that too. All right, so I'm flipping to Second Timothy now. And guys, I genuinely believe we're in the last days. I think there is a huge chance that we will not be, um, we will not die before Christ's return. I genuinely believe that. But if that's not true, this still stands. What we're about to read is still, still 100% applicable and relevant to you today. So in 2 Timothy chapter 2, I want to look at... Um, verse um verse 11 first let's look at verse 11 for if we died with him we shall also live with him if we endure we should also reign with him if we deny him he will also deny us if we are faithless he remains faithful he cannot deny himself the thing that stands out to me in these verses is if we deny him he will deny us. This is not Christ abandoning or forsaking you. This is Christ respecting your decision. God is not a tyrant. He's not a bully. He gives us the option to say, no, I don't want to worship you. I don't like this. He gives us the option. So if we deny him, he denies us in that he honors our decision which is painful, but also beautiful, that God respects us enough to say, you didn't ask to be created. You have the choice to be unmade. You have the choice to deny me. And I'll respect that decision. Going forward, verse um, 15, be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and idle babblings, for they will increase to more ungodliness. Shun profane and idle babblings. Have you guys heard of Twitter? I feel like Twitter is like the breeding ground of idle babblings and profanity, right? It's no good. It's no good to talk about and argue about and all this stuff, things that aren't a salvation issue. We have to be patient and kind with one another. Shun profane and idle babblings. They will increase more ungodliness. So when you engage in negative conversations, like you see on social media all the time, this is producing more ungodliness. It's not reflecting Christ's character. Christ is above all of that. And he gives us the opportunity to be above all of that too and show what his love really means. So stay above that so it doesn't lead to more downfall, more ungodliness. Verse 17 says, their message will spread like cancer. Um, Hymenius and Philetus are of this sort. We don't really know much about them who have strayed concerning the truth, saying that the resurrection is already past, and they overthrow the faith of some. So they're preaching this false message. And Paul is saying, stick stick to the original message here. Stick to what I said. I, Christ spoke to me. Follow his instruction. Follow Christ's promises. Follow my teachings. This is the real substance other people coming up with new stuff, other people thinking, oh, this is some special new way to think about it. That's overcomplicated, idle babbling, straying from the truth. Just stay to the simple basics. And the other things that aren't salvation issues, may chat about them, sure, but don't make that your primary focus. Vegan, vegetarian, meat eaters, pescatarians, whatever you want to be. Don't judge other people for that. Don't make that a salvation issue. It's really not. It's a personal conviction. 
And while certain diets may prove healthier um, or studies try to show that certain lifestyles are healthier, you don't have to be right to be saved. (laughs) You don't have to be right to be saved. Of course, you should care about your health, but you don't have to be right about what health is to be saved. Do you get my point? These sideline issues are not as important as those salvation issues. Believing that Jesus Christ died for your sins and accepting him into your heart and following him and and relying on the Holy Spirit to convict your heart of things, what is right and what is wrong. That's what's important. And you know, Ellen White even says this about these verses, that all this idle babbling, talking about issues that aren't anything to do with salvation, shut up about it. Focus on the real facts. Focus on what scripture plainly says. That's what Ellen White says. People use her writings, her personal letters to individual people to to, um, put put rules and, and things. They're not salvation issues. Do I believe that Ellen White was an incredibly wise woman and that she had visions and God spoke to her? Yes, don't get me wrong. And I think she had was just way above, uh, way, way beyond her time. But let us not be sidetracked and distracted from God's truth with idle babbling and arguing over the little stuff that really in the big picture doesn't matter and is not going to win over anyone's heart. It's not going to win anyone over. Okay, so um, skipping forward to chapter three, and this is where um, the whole last days, I believe that we're in the last days, kind of comes in what that comment is tied to. In chapter three of second Timothy, but know this, I'm in verse one, but know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. Have we had perilous times before? Of course, we've had world wars, rumors of wars and all these things, natural disasters. That's been happening for a long time, right? But that doesn't mean it doesn't apply to the end. Does that make sense? Just because it's happened before doesn't mean that that's not going to happen at the end. And whether it's really the end or not, guys, this is still applicable. You should still be focusing on Christ, number one, and sharing the gospel message, number one. Okay, so for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. Have you ever read in a history book a point of time where we are this self-involved as we are in this world? I also think of in Matthew where it talks about knowledge will increase That's one huge thing that makes me think we're in the last days. The amount of knowledge we have, the technology and scientific advances we've had in the last 100 years is unthinkable. It's exponential. It's completely exponential. And lovers of pleasure, this is today. There's a difference between self-care, right? Getting enough rest and and you know, not overwhelming yourself, not too much stress. There's a difference between that and self-indulgence, loving of self more than you love God. There's a difference. And when you are studying scripture and denying yourself in the way that Christ calls us to, those lines aren't so blurry. You'll know in your heart, you'll be convicted of, is this godly or ungodly? Me um, taking an extra long shower to relax, a nice hot shower at the end of the day, that's not self-indulgent. That's just trying to relax. But if I'm spending hundreds of dollars on different products for my hair and my face, and you know, it's not I shouldn't wash my face or put some sunscreen on, but what are we really prioritizing when we do that? What are our resources really going into? Does that make sense? And when you study scripture and you focus on God the way it talked about in 1 Timothy, those things are going to be evident to you. You're going to be able to discern, is this worth it? Is this ungodly? 
Is this normal? Is this not? And that goes for all of these things, unloving, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good. This is the world we live in right now. This is the world we live in right now. And I think social media is another huge issue with self-indulgence. And I am saying that fully aware that I do it too. I love sharing my runs on Facebook with my friends. And while part of it is a genuine enjoyment of sharing others uh, with others what I'm doing, there's a part of it where it's like, I'm proud. I ran a 5K today and I want to tell everybody about it. I took a cool picture. We're not immune. It's our human nature to be this way. But social media has amplified that. And social media, to be honest with you, is another reason I feel like we're in the last days. The way it's corrupted our minds and hearts this whole list, you guys. And then also um, having a form of godliness, but denying its power. There's so much spirituality in this world that is completely empty. And that's a whole nother topic. I'm not going to get into that. But that's another thing that's a huge deal. So all of this is in the last days. So even if we're not in the last days, though, there's no denying that these things are a huge issue in our time. And only God has the power to change your heart and to help you discern between these things and the good things, between right and wrong, good and evil. Only God can do that for you. We cannot rely on ourselves. We just, we cannot rely on ourselves to do this work. All right. So verse six, for of this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible women loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts, always learning, never able to come to the knowledge of the truth, learning, but no knowledge of truth. Uh, that's us, right? People can learn, 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 and still not know God still not have knowledge of truth in their hearts. Okay. These people are going to progress no further. Their folly will be manifest to all as theirs also was. And this is talking about people with Moses. Guys, some point very soon, it's going to be real clear who is in the wrong and who is in the right. We're going to be separated and it could be painful. And even if it's not the last days, like I'm saying, we're still separating. We need to separate ourselves from the world. It's getting bad. And I don't mean to be pessimistic. I want to be optimistic. I'm optimistic in that I know Christ has secured our eternal fate. But what are you doing today to reach out to others, to be holy, which means to be set apart? Study your Bible. Don't be afraid to share with others the word just because you're young. Don't be afraid to be different. Don't be afraid to follow Christ in your convictions. If you're truly seeking him, he will convict you of what is right. When you seek him with all your heart, and that's not just going to church and reading some books, learning, that's not what the knowledge is. You can take this word, this book, and you can completely fill your life with goodness, and you will be able to endure any suffering, any persecution, and that could just be being bullied at school, people teasing you about your convictions. It can be as minimal as that. You don't have to be a martyr to suffer for God. So I hope this didn't get into too much of a ramble, but I just want to admonish you, please study scripture. Seek the knowledge of God, not just to learn facts. Seek him with your whole heart so that you don't fall into this trap, so that you are not following the examples of so many adults and leaders in our world. You may be young. I am too. I'm not even 30, guys. But God, the Holy Spirit, can convict us and help us to fight this battle and to come out on the other side with Jesus Christ. 
Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for scripture, that we have something to go by, that we have your word, your truth, your knowledge in this book. I ask that you convict our hearts, that we can come to Jesus and that we can come to the Father and that the Holy Spirit will fill us with power and that we can discern what is good and evil. Lord, I thank you for this Sabbath day. Please be with us, encourage us, and help us to be at peace with whatever trials we are going through at this time. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you have a great rest of your day, whether you're watching this on Sabbath or another time. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.